Roadblocks are obstacles that keep us from manifesting faster rather than later. The, the fewer blocks you have in your consciousness, the quicker you can manifest anything you need. You'll be able to manifest instantaneously if you have no blocks at all. You become transparent, a clear channel for this divine intelligence that's flowing to us and through us all the time. We live in a sea of love and when we really grasp that, um, the blocks can di just disappear, disappear. One of the ways to get rid of blocks is to fill our consciousness with flood tides of love and just feel divine love, unconditional love. Whatever holds thought in line with unself love receives directly the divine power. That means that you can manifest and you can heal and you can bring into your experience harmonious situations when need be if you don't have any blocks. And you get rid of blocks when you change your identity from your ego-based self to your spiritual self, your divine idea self, which is free, which is um, fetterless. And it's a shift in your consciousness. You have to desire it, and then you have to be willing to do the inner work to let go of whatever those negative blocks are that have built up in your subconscious mind. And if you really fill your thought with the positives and you're on the spiritual path, they may even just come up to the surface of your consciousness like a knot that will be untied. I know when I had a, my, an awakening in my 20s, a big awakening with a, a spiritual healing that took place, I was meditating one day and I could actually see this knot over my head that was loosening up and these ideas of what was right and what was wrong were completely shifting. Things that I had accepted as being perfectly okay in the human realm to do or to be were totally unacceptable after I, after I had this awakening. But it was like a gentle process of bringing it to the surface and letting me look at it so that I could just nothingize it and I would, wouldn't be interested in it anymore. But we start to change as, um, as we spiritualize our thought and we decide that we want things to be different. Well, you know, sometimes because we're living in our own sea of consciousness, it's very difficult for us to be self-analytical and to see what it is. And sometimes we have to go to another person to have them maybe give us some insight into what it could be. It can even be a good friend. You know, if, sometimes if you just have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with a good friend about something that you feel is blocking you, they may have an insight into your behavior or how you operate that can awaken you to the realization that maybe this is what I need to do in order to make the shift in my consciousness. Because it's all about shifting our consciousness. This is why vacations are a good thing, too. When you get a change of scenery. Um, I know when I was a flight attendant and I used to get on the jet every week, it was a wonderful thing to shift my consciousness to go to a different city to be in an environment where I was up in the sky rather than on the ground. I, I've learned, you know, when you're living in the same environment day after day after day, you have to kind of work at shifting your consciousness if you really want to make big changes. Where if you're traveling, there's a lot of spontaneity. There's a lot of um, opportunity for synchronicities and coincidences, which is always reminding you that there is something magical going on. Meditation is like mind clearing. When you go into a meditative state, either through passive meditation where you're focusing on a mantra or you're breathing, um, or if you're just releasing, that's another way to meditate. I like to do that where you just release, you let go. And I tell myself, I'm not my body and I'm not my mind, meaning my ego mind. I just let it go. And I merge with this divine intelligence, which is everywhere and that we're all part of. Then um, I find it's a clearing and 
it allows me to accept a new idea that I might be working on more completely, you know, than I might visualize. Um, I used to do it when I was writing my book. I would visualize myself standing in a bookstore holding my book that was finished, and now it's finished. Now I'm visualizing myself traveling around the world talking because I like to travel. There's always something to work on. Visualizing the, the outcome that you are looking for is definitely a good way to get rid of the blocks. You don't have to worry about the in-between stuff, how you're going to achieve whatever that thing is that you're trying to achieve. Like, let's say, okay, I wanted to write a book. I'm not a writer. I'm a public speaker, but I'm not a writer. So I let my divine guidance lead me to a woman who is a writing coach and she led me because she realized I wasn't a writer and I needed a ghost writer to my writing partner and she happened to be just the perfect person for me to write the book with we spent three years getting together having a good time enjoying the process and then I was led to my publisher Balboa Press and every step along the way has been very interesting fun it's been a learning process. It's been very creative. And I've also discovered that each step along the way has been nourishing my soul. Because if I'd just gone from, okay, I want to write a book, let's get together and knock it out in two months, to here it is published and, you know, I'm on different TV shows talking about it, it really wouldn't have been good for me personally. I needed to go through the process. Because in that process of writing the book and spending a few years doing it with this woman, we both grew tremendously. I mean, her whole life changed dramatically, and the lessons that I learned in, along the way in the process of spending that time writing the book were invaluable. So it's not just about the product. It's also about the process and what, you, what your soul and your, your, your character learns as you go through the process. That's, that's the important part. Okay, if you're trying to manifest abundance into your life, there's a few things that you need to take into consideration about abundance. For instance, is this abundance that you want to manifest just all about you? Or is it going to help other people? Because that's important. If it's really just based on your own ego and um, you're not taking into consideration how it's going to help other people along the way, there could be a block there. Because the more people you try to help while you're on this journey, the more help you're going to get from the other side, from your guides, from the invisible realm of spirit, which is always there, helping us, guiding us, directing us. And that help comes as we become less and less self-centered and more and more altruistic and thinking about what we can do to help the planet. And this is a wonderful time to be thinking like that because, as I mentioned before, the shift taking place is rearranging people and putting them in situations where they can bring forth things, messages, you know, books, art, speaking, whatever it is they do what in their practice to help other people and to help the planet as we transition from matter-based thinking into more spiritually based thinking because this is the time of the big shift. It's been compared to when we went from the agrarian stage that we were in into the industrial revolution and then we went into the technological phase that we're in you know now we're seeing technology everywhere now we're going from matter-based thinking where the scientific approach the Newtonian approach to thinking has always been you have to be able to see it taste it touch it feel it or measure it in order for it to be real the world is like a big clock a machine and there's nothing you can do if something terrible is going to happen to you, it's going to happen. That's the way a lot of people have been thinking 
throughout a long, long time, and many people are still thinking that way. The new paradigm is, no, I control the outer world with my inner world of thought. And we're proving that in quantum physics with different you know, experiments that they've done that have actually shown that when you observe something in the material world, you have an impact on it. And you can actually change matter through your thought, be it your flesh by healing it or manifesting or, you know, they've actually done experiments where they've tested people using their thought to control the throw of the dice and they've proven that yes, we can have an impact on that, we can have an impact on mechanical things. I mean, if your car is acting up, you can actually go to that place where there are no problems with your car and you'll end up having something good happen. People have had results impacting their computers, you know, when there was a problem by changing their thought about it. Well, I do think um, if you're interested in this approach to life and you're really on the path I know for me, I couldn't, I couldn't read enough books. I mean, once I had that experience when I was 21 years old of manifesting an apartment in New York, a transfer, and it, it worked out so harmoniously. And it made me realize that um, what we think about, we can manifest. I wanted to know more. So I just started reading everything I could find on the subject. And you, you'll find that when you're on the path, you'll be drawn to workshops and books and people and situations that reinforce and help you um, along the way figure out how to become more and more effective. Um, and if you, if you really are serious about wanting to know how to do these things, you will find a way. It's asking your inner self always for the next thing you need to know, and it, it will show up. When you focus on what's blocking you, you're, you're just going to get more and more messed up. Uh, one of the things we're seeing a lot of in these times, I, I'm being told, is um, people having problems focusing or remembering like an Alzheimer's situation they're going into. And, you know, it's a proven fact that if you meditate every day and you use your mind to think and explore and to discover new things, you're going to be a lot better off. So it's really important with all the people that are coming along now that are baby boomers, they're going to be the biggest part of the population. They want to be able to continue thinking and focusing and interacting and doing things. Meditating every day um, is, is very key because it's been proven at Harvard Medical and different schools that you can actually rebuild, you, you make neuron connections in your brain every time you meditate. They have done MRIs of people like the monks that you know meditate with the Dalai Lama and they know that People who have spent decades meditating, their brains light up in ways that the average person's just doesn't. So it's a really important thing to learn how to meditate and have some sort of practice that you do every day and be excited about using your mind in a special way because this is the next phase of human evolution. Human emotion is something that some people have a better control over than others. Part of doing this inner work is getting yourself in a place where none of it moves you. I know many people still carry a lot of anger or jealousy is a big emotion, um, frustration. Just being out of sorts with yourself is not a good thing. If you really want to be in the flow and have your life just show up every day in a very harmonious way so that it's effortless, it's fun, it's joyous. Getting rid of these negative emotions is an important part of it. And they, they start to disappear 
the more you focus on unconditional love, making it a point to love mankind and not have all these prejudices and attitudes about our brothers and sisters the way some people have. We see it, you know, manifesting in the news all the time where this group hates this group, you know, this pe these people want to go to war with these people. Well, if you're really living from your higher self, your divine self, there is no war. Men and women are equal. There is no prejudice. There is no extreme patriotism. We're all citizens of the universe, brothers and sisters, and we live in order and divine order and peace. And it's a whole different way of living. If you still have a lot of lack in your life and you, you think you're meditating on prosperity, there's obviously something in your subconscious mind that's keeping you from being prosperous. Many of us were programmed. They say the first seven years of our lives are very critical, which they are, because when you're a small child up to age seven, you're living at the theta level of consciousness, which means whatever you hear, see, in your environment, you take in like a sponge. And maybe your parents had, you know, money problems, or they, they said things like, um, there's never enough, or, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, or, you know, rich people aren't very nice, so that's why we don't like rich, you know. There's all, all these built-in prejudices that people have about money, and as children, we can pick up a lot of negative programming from people if you know and we it's not that we want to or we don't want to it's just the way it is so in order to reprogram ourselves we need to know how to go within to that secret place of the most high that closet where we shut out the world we close the door on our five senses we go within and we create in that inner sanctuary what we want and we have to feel it and we have to live it, and we have to be it. And until we do that, we are going to keep attracting the same old program because that's just the way it is. It, you have to, until you become that new man and the old man has fallen away, um, and, and it's a very, it's not easy, it's, it's a struggle because that old you wants to continue being who, they are, you know, they don't go quietly. But you have to get yourself in a place where it's so deep that you've made the transformation. And it's work. That's why some of the mystics call it the work. You know, Byron Katie likes to call it the work. Gurdjieff called it the work. Um, you have to do that inner work. You have to let go. But you have to be conscious enough to even realize that there's something to let go of. You know, I, I, there really are people walking through life in a trance, you know. The mystics can see that, where people are just sleepwalking. And they haven't awakened yet. They, they will awaken eventually. It just depends on how fast you want to wake up and whether or not you have a desire or an interest in it. We all have free will. We all have the ability to either take the teachings that have been coming down through the ages for millennials, or we can just turn our back on them. It just depends on each individual. So if you like this video and the concept of attracting abundance into your life at will, and you're thinking that it would be great to continue to work together, then you're going to love what I have for you in the Abundance X Factor. It's how you learn to take attracting abundance into your life to the next level. To learn more about it, simply click the Abundance X Factor right below this video.